Today on the podcast, we have Avita Joe, who is a film and TV editor in documentary and narrative, uh, both in the United States and China. Um, Avita, welcome to the show. Hi, everybody. This is Avita. So um, do you want to start out just by kind of telling us how you got interested in filmmaking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, I started uh, school, like, I started like a uh, undergrad second uh, degree school in Shanghai Theater Academy when I was in uh, China. So that started my way because I always love to watch movies and stuff. And then, but my first major actually was environmental engineering, which in another university. But back then this, there were seven schools in Shanghai that has this kind of a connection program. Like you can pick other majors from the other school, but you have to keep a good uh, GPA stuff. And so that's what I picked because that's where, what I really like and what I really love. So that started my film journey. And then after uh, doing the school year, I met several friends over there and some of them graduated earlier than me and they went aboard to US to like, keep their continuing study about film. And then when they came back and they uh, talked with me, so gave me this idea of like, hey, maybe maybe I can go to like US to like study film stuff, right? Because before I haven't, I can never imagine that before those friends told me, hey, that's not that complicated and not that expensive. You can uh, make your own way through that. So that's how it started. And then when I came here, finished my grad school and during my grad school, I started interning at this uh, commercial studio, independent commercial studio, very artistic. So that's how I started into being intern. And by then, the only thing I know is editing and uh, I don't have a camera and my major here is film and TV studies. So it's very uh, based on series and writing papers, stuff, not really production. So the, my boss just like, if you can edit, just give me some material to be very creative to start editing. So that's how I start to edit and then I got a lot of great feedbacks and I added back in China as well but I never thought about that's gonna be my career right so since then in the commercial studio I feel like hey I feel like I do this thing really quick and I love it and then people love what I do then it starts became uh you know a pass I can think about and then start it yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well for somebody who's maybe abroad not in the United States and thinking well hey maybe I should go study in the United States too like what what was that process like you said it, it wasn't hard right were there like were there hoops that you had to jump through how did you pick what mm -hmm. school that you went to right so so basically my friend came back and what I was really interested in, not interested, but like really concerned about is the money and everything, right? That's the mm -hmm. main thing about it. And then, then I started to do research. Actually, very interesting is originally because I, I'm not sure whether my parents will agree me to study film film, uh, which is a really risky <laughs> business to jump into, right? And spend a lot of money for school for them. So originally I told them, I just want to do like study more. I mean, that's actually how I was thinking about it. And then, but I want to do something like close to like more like a, a, not even film, but more like entertainment business, that kind of part. So what I picked is actually I picked like six or five school and I pick like different majors, like, but like um, integrity marketing or something like that, like something like close to entertainment or something like that. So my parents still like feel okay for me to study, but not thinking about wasting time just running film. But there was only one major, which is about film, which is film and TV studies in Cal State Los Angeles. And eventually that's the one I picked, but that's the only kind of film major-ish in that way and then for this whole pass is like i pick uh like public universities mostly and then looking to their uh, tuitions and then figuring out how i'm gonna do it and then just figure out what's the financial situation is gonna be is probably the most important thing and, and of course you need to learn you need to have a lot of exams to that point like language exams and GRE as well, I took GRE as well. And so, yeah, it's a very, it's a long process and then a lot of things need to uh, 
worrying about too. But yeah, mm, that's just the beginning of a of a pass. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So mm. geez, this might be like a horrible question, but does does everyone in China learn English? Like you speak it so well. Yeah. Um, I would say because normal, like every kid started uh, English probably like the third grade, like my my generation. My okay. generation started like a third grade. But right now the kids like started in kindergarten or at least first grade. And like, it's like a, such a popular thing already. But I started in third grade. And because English is, it's my generation, like English is the main, uh, how do you say, like main course you have to take to to go from from middle school to high school, from high school to college. So like, that's the one of the main three you have to uh, really take and have a good score on, like Chinese, math, huh. and English. Wow, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you might be interested. My my sister's school. Um, we both have boys who are in first grade, and my sister's school they teach Chinese. They and um, wow. so he can say. I mean, he can only say a couple words right now. They just mm -hmm. they just started. It's been a couple months, but he'd say like dog, cat, drink, that sort of <laughs> thing. And I thought, you know, that's such a good idea. And so their their theory is like U.S. Chinese relations are going to be so important that like of yeah. course they should be teaching this at school. Um, yeah. So it's a really yeah, it's a really good school. Um, but, <laughs> Yeah. Um, anyhow, one of the things that I read about your work is that you have a very unique cutting style. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was on back in 2015, and one of your films was going through a festival, was it? Um, which one? Was um, that? I think there was one, if I don't know which one specific you're talking about, but the one got into most festivals and got more, most recognition is the documentary I added like I added that one actually in 2018 and then our first like we premiered at Hot Docs International uh, like Documentary Film Festival in Canada mm -hmm. and that started our like the, the journey for this film so it went from Canada and then we the next bigger one we got is the KVIFF which is currently very international film Fe festival in Czech uh, that that's like the um, it's also an A level film festival, and then we got the uh, special jury award for best documentary, and that's very big. And then it start from there. Like we, it's interesting. We start it's a Chinese film, but we travel. We started in Canada, and then we go all around in Europe, and then we went back to China. China like almost by the end of last year. Like we we also got like best doc got documentary in Guangzhou International F uh, Documentary Film Festival. So that one, I will say it's very interesting. It's a very indie film, but it got way more uh, recognition from, from both, Euro both Europe and in China, like way out of our imagination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, do you mind if we play your clip for a minute? So people yeah, can yeah, see yeah, what we're please. talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay. Who is she? My story is all I have. Are you following me? Where did we leave off? Blackouts. What did you discuss for four hours? Human terrain analysts do not gather intelligence. This is what we do. Just little by little. Moment by moment. She has nothing to do with that. Seeds need um, air, water, light. Mama. Mama. Yeah. Yeah. Mama. 
我们家族大家都学儒家文化每个人生活的群体是不一样妈妈Mm. He's so sweet. Was he an actor? The little boy, was he acting? No, no. So what I picked for this three is more like the, the way I the, kind of like in my past. Like so I started that like editing a lot of tabletop commercials, which is the first popcorn version. Was the, that was the studio I was interning at the first. So I did a lot of those kind of kind of crazy like make the food as the uh character like 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 very out of the box kind of a thing about the food mm -hmm. uh, so that's how i started and then and then move on to like narrative stuff a lot and then so the second one is the one i actually uh worked with the directors the second time she was in she was elected to uh she was elected in aifi dww which is director or like a woman program and that's the thesis I added for her. And then somehow started like, uh, because in 2017, I start to uh, work on as the first, first AE in Netflix documentary series, Making Murder season two. So that's how I'm starting like in documentary world. And somehow a lot of documentaries coming to me. And then the last piece, which, which I didn't edit it, I didn't edit the trailer of the, the third piece. That's the trailer. We have a trailer editor edited. Uh, but that's the, the documentary I was mentioning earlier. Uh, we just went to Europe and come back to China in the U.S. as well. Um, that's an actual family kind of a documentary talking about self-growth, education, that kind of stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's all like a, a documentary. It's not acting at all for the last piece. Gotcha, gotcha. So how, do, like, how would you describe the the unique editing style that you do 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 you feel that it's unique i just a couple people wrote that about you so i'm, I'm curious to see like mm -hmm. and the popcorn thing was definitely definitely like super unique in that it was going forward and then it was going backwards <laughs> and there's like glitches like right. but that, it's probably not documentary style you probably do no, something no, different no. right Right, 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 right. So I will say for the food one, it's more like, uh, it's very special because uh, the my producer and director was just basically giving me a lot of freedom to be creative. So it's based on music you pick or we will think about a story based on this food. It depends on how they shot it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even like, like for this popcorn one, uh, oh, I think they already have a, this kind of basic idea, but they were just sh shot a lot of the shots. And then after I watch them and think about it and to see, hey, what kind of story I can give it to this image. So basically you write something out of it or we will write together, like me and the uh, director or the, uh, the writers working over there. So it's more like you just like jump in this kind of idea and be as creative and as fun as you can. So you don't ha really have any limitations, right? Um, your limitation is just uh, the f it's a, it's whatever you you were given to. You need to work from it. Mm -hmm. um, but you, there's no like a story continuity or anything that that kind of a 
limitation. But for documentary, is is totally different. It's more like um, because editors for documentary is more like a writer as well. Most of the time, you have the footage, and then you need to know how to write, or you have so many footage, which story I should go to, and which direction I should go. What this character? How should I structure this? character and how should I structure this story? You basically create it with the director together. So it's more like a discover and explore with the director together. Mm-hmm. And as long as you guys find that path little by little, it could be frustrating, it could be like slow, it's like slow process, but once you get found it and then you, it goes quicker. But for narrative is different because Narrative, it could be like one scene or one shot has like 10 takes, right? Like it's exactly yeah. the same. It's the opposite of documentary. Like some stuff, you only have one or you don't even have it. You have to cheat a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, but for narrative, it's like one scene, you have five or six different takes. Then it's more like you, you need to know which one works best for the acting. Like does the acting works well? Uh, does the emotion place well? So it's kind of like um, definitely narrative and documentary uh, editing skills or techniques can uh, mix together a little bit. You, you watching documentaries footage a lot helps, even helps me to po- of point out word act what actings are good acting because documentaries basically there are no intentionally acting mm-hmm. unless the 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 person in the docu- in front of the camera is somehow acting as well, but that's different compared with actors acting. But you can see which one is more genuine from the actors acting in the narrative ones. So that one will help. And then, yeah, and in in narrative, the editor's job for shaping the story was was way less because you already had the script and then it's being shot that way. But also there are many times for uh, first time director or second time or even like early stage directors they they might don't have something else said or maybe because of time money or any kind of situation then working in documentaries also can help you to like you know how we can make something out of maybe you don't have it that kind of stuff make yeah. it work yeah mm-hmm. so how do you know like if you say you get a project and it's a documentary and they they've completed shooting all the footage and you as the editor are sitting down and you're going through everything. Like, do you need, do you, do you need to figure out like in your own head if it will work as a documentary? Like what if something just so big is missing that you can't make it? Has that ever happened to you? Mm-mm. Yeah. Like for that Chinese documentary, uh, well, like before me, there are other editors and the film The film was like about four, four years-ish. And then, so we, so they, she already had several cuts versions and she showed people already. She showed me before I worked on uh, getting on board. So there are just major issues. Like the audience don't like her. They feel like the film doesn't flow at all. And it feels like the character doesn't really match in. And there were a lot of bigger issues. So it's more, uh, for that specific piece, it's more like I get I get familiar to the footage first and then I'm going to ask her questions. Like what kind of story, because no matter what kind of footage you have, uh, as a director, you need to have your idea of what kind of story you want to tell. They might not know at the early stage, but they will know later by later. So also trying to communicate with him or her about what kind of story you want to tell what's this character you want to the stories you want to shape what's more important for you and then we can look back into because they shot the whole thing so they have this kind of idea and like in, in their head right so and then go back to uh like carving down the footage and to see what we can work together to make that happen basically mm-hmm. to try to see how to make that happen mm-hmm. Even, no matter how big it is um it's always going to be you have such a big thing and then and then you nail down nail down eventually you will feel you will know like you will know exactly what you need 
no matter how much footage you had before, a lot of them just being carving down uh-huh. through the process. Yeah. So let's say, for example, you have a character and, mm-hmm. and the director or the intent of the film is for that character to be sympathetic. Like people need to like mm-hmm. her, they need to feel for her. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Toy Story, um, have you seen Toy Story? When they Yeah, the first one? Yeah. The, well, so yeah. I forget which one exactly. I think it was... It, it, I forget which Toy Story, but the the character Woody, um, they mm-hmm. they wrote the first thing for Toy Story, and Woody was just not likable. Everybody hated him. They screened the film. They just thought this character is so mean to all the other toys. And then they redid it, and he doesn't really come off that way anymore. So, mm-hmm. what are some ways that you, as a documentary editor, can take um, documentary footage? Um, where the characters aren't relating in the way that it's meant to be to help help people feel for that character. Mm-mm-mm. For that piece specifically for Confusion Dream, it, we have that issue for a long time. And then, so as an editor, first I need to figure out who she is. And then I need to f- feel like I can connect to her first. Like, And I need to find out what is her, like, uh, from her heart, like what, what is her past, why she's being so crazy about it. Let's find out what is the real reason behind her because my director really feels for her. So it's more like you really need to connect with your the characters. If it's a character driven or a variety driven piece, but you re- really need to feel for that character. And, and when you do in test screening or people's feedbacks, you, you figure out what is their notes, like why they don't like her. Okay. Let's say she had, she is, People feel like she is crazy, or uh, she treat her son very cruelly. That's how they feel. That's why they don't like her, and they, they don't connect to her. Like why she's being so crazy. Then, but what I take from it is, if it's a if if that's the character the director pick, and she live with them for a while to shoot that character, then that means there's something, there's always something behind the characters, how they show up, right? She is so uh, frustrated is because of the relationship between her and her husband caused that issue. So how you can put that in there? Mm. What, is her, what, what, what does she really want it for her kid? What does she really want for her? So there is, a, there, there is a transition there. Like eventually she realized that she's doing everything not for her. She, not for her kid, it's for her. So you figure out your, really your character's background and what's their really, what's their really driven is and, and then write their story. If it connects to you, then it will connect to the audience. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes. And in choosing you as the editor, I think um, I, I think this is the same film. She noted mm-hmm. that your appreciation for diversity made you the right person to edit this film. Do you think that mm-hmm. being from China was really important in crafting it? Mm, uh, I think it's more like I don't I don't know whether it doesn't doesn't matter. Like I came, uh, I come from different country or something but if i what i can say is like if i came from this culture and i went into another culture and then i look and see so maybe i will no matter even it's not me if it's someone else they they see more things they see more diversity diverse of cultures and peoples and everything they it might gonna help them to be like more uh, open-minded or like more how do you say like easy to understand what different people's perspectives to help them to be like more open-minded and easily to feel uh, different people's like uh, uh, feelings mm-hmm. maybe that maybe that will help um but i don't want to say like if you don't go to another culture or a country you are not eligible for it, like editing or something like that but i, I see it, it i would say it's more like um uh maybe it, this is the opportunity for me to be like uh really uh, feel more about other peoples or different class of peoples or different group of peoples. And um, also like watching footage and then especially for documentaries, it's also help you to be more compassionate and understand for other peoples. And other, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that may be more how, yeah. 
What are some of your personal goals as an editor? Mm, mm, mm. My personal goals. Wow, that's a very important question, which I'm still trying to figure out. Um, I mean, I would say like for a long time, I would just say like for editing wise, it's more like you uh, you have a uh, you, you have the uh, first of all you have the ability to pick projects. Mm-hmm. That means like based on your own time, based on your own financial plans, and based on your own uh, like time and schedule wise, right? Like, do I have enough time to do this, and how much money I can get it from it? And um, that's one thing. And the other thing is, if it's like an, in the ideal world or perfect world for editors, it will be like you most of the time directors with direct like famous directors they always work with one direct editor pretty much if you go search um those famous directors their works you will find out like pretty much all of their most of their work are done by one editor because uh this editor and director the relationship is very hard to find and uh, uh cultivate and then you know grow and then eventually like uh, have great products later and also editor and directors are probably the two people are working together the longest time for uh, one project so ideally it will be as an editor you can find the right team to work with which can both support your creative uh goals and also support your financial goals as well because editors do i would say uh film crews work extremely long hours and hard and and, you know so i do think they deserve uh they they do deserve like financial support as well like the, the the good level of financial support so ideally it will be you find this team or finders director to work with like constantly they have projects and you so you can have projects and then and then you guys can work together like in a long longer sustainable way mm-hmm. and also for me is also like if i have the opportunity later in the years to be more if i have more and more enough experiences i also would like to share with people in different ways you know whether it's um a like being teaching because I was, we, we have this uh, organization called Creating Creators in here in California, basically in LA as well. They will teach like elementary schools or was public schools, middle schools and high school students like about like films, films, film making or something like that. So, which is, which is really fun to do. So if I have more and more experiences, maybe I can share with like a people as a teacher or like a coach and to share my ex- experiences or like uh, my skills because for editing skills is not that difficult to learn. So I guess it's more like career uh, goal, like uh, coaching or um, maybe artistic stuff to, 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 to sharing about. I'm not quite sure about artistic stuff to, sh- to share or teach, um, but definitely that's going to be another side of goal uh, compared uh, except just working in editing, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like finding that director relationship is kind of like, it's kind of like dating, you know? Yeah, it's like, they were saying like, it's like a marriage, not like dating, not not dating, not relationship, but marriage already, yeah. Like, like there are a lot of negotiating and then, you know, a lot of bearing through long times together with tedious stuff and then also psychologically supporting as well yeah. mostly from editor to, to director yeah from editor to the director so yeah, yeah. The director is more vulnerable you know because this is their baby you know it, they really care about that so you're an outsider how to help them to get their baby coming out you know like yeah. i'm just an editor i'm i'm, I'm not gonna taking ownership of this product i'm helping him or her to create this thing i'm not going to jump in above him or her to like this is my work i'm gonna you will give suggestions and ideas and then see this might not be a great idea or you give them multiple options like okay i can do this and as long as you have time and to do that right um so you give them multiple options so they can see what are they and they can pick what they want and then help them to uh make this work they are really 
uh, proud of. Yeah. 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 I think that one thing that I get self-conscious of personally, when like showing work that isn't finished to somebody who needs to Mm -hmm. see it, like the camera crew or the director, just the whole team, is that Mm -hmm. like when showing them the incomplete project, and receiving that feedback, it's almost like, I'm not sure if they're aware that I know that this is not like a final product. Like it's definitely not, but I just need the feedback, right? Do you think that in your experience that the director understands that this is not your proposed final product, that like it's just a stage for feedback? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's also the trust between you and the director, right? So if you guys worked before and then, had a good had a good relationship before that's going to make this process process way easier mm-hmm. then uh, like most of them the first cut probably and then you will be a little bit nervous because they never see anything before this is the first time they see how it looks like then you guys if you guys worked before it may gonna make your mentally a little bit eased but uh the first cut is always going to be like more like like you are a little bit nervous yeah. but i will always tell them you, of course, you want to make as much as you can do. Also, you want to tell them this is the same. We want to make sure the direction is correct. Like this is the the direction you want it to be. If there's no huge issue, and then you can talk through about that. I mean that that's how working with um, directors who know what they want is very important for editors as well. You work with somebody who doesn't know what they want can be a little bit. Uh, tricky and more difficult so you have really to also help them to figure out what they really want as well like mm-hmm. like if they don't know then think about how to ask questions and maybe ask a more specific question so make them start to think and then at certain point they will figure out what do they want so it's more like a communication process as well between editors and directors definitely the trust is very important sometimes can be frustration as well mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. what do you think is the hardest thing that you've had to had, had to do in your career mm, i would say um the hardest thing for sure there's one thing for editors also is uh like 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 being freelancer right like being a freelancer is very hard like you need to have your mentally be prepared like um you have something and then it's like a gig industry right so you have something and then you don't have anything and then you have something Mm -hmm. and when you have something you are like working working like a dog like 12 hours a day you are so exhausted for like a month two months sometimes and then and then you have nothing for like a little bit of time. So it's kind of like very dramatic lifestyle. You have a lot of stuff and you have nothing. You have a lot of stuff, you have nothing. So mentally be prepared and then think about what do you really, what do I really want? That's kind of a challenging thing for me too as well. But I, I know it's, a, it's very challenging for a lot of uh, freelancers and that's for sure. And then like plan, uh, planning your financial sh- things as well is also can be struggling for freelancers as well. That's also another downside of working as a film crew sometimes. Um, and then I would say creatively. Uh, creatively, I don't, I don't think there's any difficulty or something like that because it's more like teamwork and then communication little by little. More like for me, it's more like sometimes oh, it's very long hours of working or a lot of pressure because of the budget and they have become like compressed and then it's a lot of like mentally working long hours kind of a pressure for on me. That's very challenging. Mm-hmm. So uh, I would say it might happen to every single freelancers or film crews before. So, uh, but I would say it's always going to be happening. So yeah. just like just planning what you really want, maybe what's your, the next step you want for your career is mm-hmm. to make you feel better about that. Yeah. What is maybe one or two ways that you like decompress when you mm-hmm. go from the, the 12 hour days to the nothing and then mm-hmm. back? Like, are there, are there mental exercises that you do to kind of help yourself still grounded mm-hmm. or, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. 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 I would say it's a, uh, it's, I still need to, 
practice about that more. I would say like it's more like um, uh, maybe uh, have your mental be prepared before this happen. Mm. So then when it happened, you can you know you can feel up a little bit better. You know what's gonna happen. Yeah. So what is gonna be the next? So always be a little bit ahead of instead of like you always feel like you were being pushed to. Yeah, you're being yeah. pushed to like working so hard. You're being pushed to uh, take a rest or something like that. So mentally be prepared a little bit and like ahead of that. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's probably will help. That makes sense. So yeah. what kind of films do you hope to be working on in the next couple of months, the next year? Mm-hmm. What does that mm-hmm. look like for you? Um, I, I mean, before this whole like pandemic thing started and uh, uh, it's more like, I, I'm actually thinking about working for like a longer, longer term. Like I would say like, if I can work in a TV show, right. Like working in the TV show because that's a longer like, gig. That would be great. Like I would want to do that. Um, or if it's a really good, like dog feature thing coming up, it might going to come up actually in the summer. Um, then I would want to do that too. So it's more like if it's a longer gig in the more stable env- working environment, I would totally want to do it. Or if it's a really good content, um, but for a little bit risky, I would want it to do that as well. So it's more like picking from a uh, longer, stable, financially stable uh, like gig and also learn a lot of experience as well. Uh, and Or if it's a really good content, like an experience you don't want to miss in your lifetime, I would want to do that as well. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you, your parents didn't quite, they weren't quite on board with the whole film college mm-hmm. thing. How do they feel mm-hmm. about what you're doing now? Um, it's more like, uh, because I, I was talk, t- talking to them, like how much it is and then what I want to do in the future. But then everything just working as itself, like I, I didn't really plan anything. Uh, I mean, now they kind of used to it already. So like, this is how it is, you know. As yeah. long as you can feed yourself, then that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. My, I know parents can be kind of like, they, they want certain things from their children. My, my dad's thing was always that he wanted me to be a stay-at-home mom. So, mm. like, that was really hard when I started my career. And it, but yeah. then, like, I wound up, kind of wound up doing what he wanted me to do for a while. So, mm. um. But that's kind of a different thing. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, do you have any advice for women who are, um, you know, getting started in the industry and how they can find success um, in pursuing mm-hmm. a post-production career? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, I, I do. I mean, definitely the whole film industry is very male-driven and then post for sure. Like, But the good thing is I feel like for editing-wise, not like about VFX or... Uh, tech or DIT, like for editing, editing wise, there are like quite a lot of uh, female editors or assets editors in the industry. Um, I would say I work with a lot of female directors. I don't know how that happened, but it just like happened. I didn't really trying to uh, pick or anything. I work whatever I have, right? Um, but I work ma- mostly with female directors, which is very interesting. Um, that helps me a lot and then they will introduce me to other directors and then uh, I think that may be helpful I don't know and it's just my own personal experiences uh, and also for uh, female editors like me as a as a foreigner and then as a female working here is also like I would say just um, you might need probably need to try harder in a way like because people will see you as maybe you're not as like as tech as a guy like like you're not very technical hands-on or something like that right yeah um but the good thing is if it's just for editing like editing technique is not very technical it's it's more about telling a story and um, a lot of times in editing room or in front of computer you're always directors it's more about communication skills and how you understand their footage, how you understand their story. I would say actually female probably has more advantage on that part than male. Mm -hmm. Um, 
so I would say definitely taking advantage of what you have and more compassionate and then more sensitive about the actings and the stories and the emotion. Because, I mean, the most important thing is emotion. If the emotion matches, it doesn't matter whether your image matches. So I would say female woman definitely has more advantage of that for, for sure. Um, so I would say take advantage of that and be, and telling myself to like be confident about like you are qualified for mm-hmm. such and such position or jobs. So don't feel like you are not qualified for that because technical stuff can be scary, but you always can learn. And for editing wise, there's not, it's not very complicated technical stuff. Mm-hmm. So uh, figure out what you what do you want to be in, in in this industry, and then find out what do they require you to do, and then prepare yourself for that position. So maybe that will like very helpful. Yeah, and you've got a lot of like a lot of indie experience, right? Is that how mm-hmm. you kind of broke in? Was through the indie? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I never went to a film school and everything like that. So I don't really have a like school mentor or like people to look like go to your school and pick you or something like that. Right, right. So yeah, so pretty, pretty much you have to work or like some low pay job at early time and free stuff and then find out the director or the projects you want to work with and then get them to have some recognitions from the festivals and then and then put your name on there mm-hmm. help for sure yeah. how did you how did you personally find like a director in indie who was on their way to a festival you know what i mean yeah yeah i mean it's it's pretty hard actually i don't think i really i mean it's i would say a lot of time is luck um, there's no i don't know what is the technique is gonna be there uh so I would say like maybe pay more, go to more workshop stuff and then like social networking things and then talk with people and like exchange your information and then um, hassling is not fun, but like trying to do that for yourself. And then sometimes it's just one person or this person will link to someone else. Yeah. Or, and make you guys meet each other. It's very interesting. So it's more like you have to do a little bit, at the least, get out of your comfort zone, and then you never know where you're gonna link to where. But you can't like force yourself to get something because then you will feel like, oh, I didn't get this. I can I didn't get that. Like it can be really hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, it's almost yeah. like if you if you keep working, you're not really sure where you're gonna be going. But if you keep getting projects under your belt you're gonna go somewhere right yeah 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 exactly yeah. so but if you have a director you really want to work with or a tv show you really want to work with mostly a tv show right you have a tv show you really like you want to work in that tv show and just figure out who you can find who are working on that tv show and then mm-hmm. try to make connections and then and make your move you know little yeah. by little. Mm-hmm. are you currently working on making a murder or was that a previous project that was uh, that was in tw- that was from 2016, 2016 till the end of twenty seventeen. Okay. Yeah. which is a long time, you know. To- yeah, because it's a longer, very long thing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds nice. I mean, so much of what we do is like freelance or like gig economy mm-hmm. stuff. The the job security just mm-hmm. really isn't there for mm-hmm. very long, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's a challenging, challenging career. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, did you did I see on your IMD, IMDb profile that you actually wrote um, one of the projects that you edited? Oh yeah, it was the Confusion Dream. So basically, uh, I shared the writing credits with the director together. Okay, because basically it was me and her like crafting this story together. Gotcha. That's why. And that's why I said editor for documentaries a lot of time they should have writing credits actually oh i get it that makes sense of course (laughs) okay um that's i think that's all the questions that i had uh, prepared is there anything else that you want to talk about before we kind of close things up um uh i would say like first of all thank you for doing this and then i like this title woman imposed and then (laughs) i do feel like uh 
well, we should get more like uh, attention for the women working posts because we have women in film, or we have women in whatever cinematographers or something like that. But women in post is like uh, I don't really I haven't really seen anything like like an organize like a group or organization just putting female working post production together. So that's very interesting, and then. Uh, be supportive to each other uh, mentally or informationally it's going to be very helpful too so yeah, yeah. I hope very so thank you <laughs> and thanks for coming on the show I really appreciate you know, learning about your your uh, jobs and your skills and it's been wonderful oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would always love to share <laughs> <laughs>